Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are working on the Corvette, yet again. Today what we're working on is actually a cooling system upgrade. You guys already saw the radiator upgrade install where we did the Mishimoto radiator install, we did the hoses, all that good stuff. I'll have a link in that to that video up above. But today, we're actually not working on the radiator cooling system for the car, for the motor, we're working on the radiator system for the supercharger. And what are we working on today? Well, a friend of mine has a supercharged Chevy Beretta. He's got a 3.5 liter V6 out of a, I'm not even sure what it came out of, Malibu or something. He has that swapped into his Beretta and he's got a custom, I believe it's a Vortex supercharger. It might be a Paxton. One of those two centrifugal type superchargers and his car has been running a air to water intercooler setup on it because those cars, it's front wheel drive, simply are not packaged well for boost and intercooling and all that stuff. So they've been running a air to water setup on that. And so he is actually upgrading to a air to air intercooler. I think he either TIG welded his front intercooler setup or he bought one and he's modifying it to fit his car. So he happened to have his air to water intercooler pump for sale. And you guys might be wondering, well, what was for sale? Well, I pretty much picked up the biggest pump that you guys can buy for a positive displacement type supercharger, or in this case, a centrifugal running an air to water intercooler setup. So what do we pick up? We picked up one of these. This is a EMP WP29 pump. This is, I don't know what the the gallons per hour or, or any of that water flow. Basically guys, if you see the ZR1, the C6 ZR1, the LT4 based, the Z06 out of the C7, the, L, the LSAs I've seen people run these on, and also the LT5, you know, I'm not sure. I have not seen many people start working on the C7 ZR1. I'm not, I'm just not sure, but, the two or three companies that offer heat exchangers for the C6 platform, specifically the ZR1, that are using a custom intercooler plumbing setup, they run these pumps. Like I said, it's that EMP pump. As you can see down here, I'm already removed the Bosch pump that the Edelbrock Supercharger kit came with. And actually, I'm running one of these pumps on the SS behind me. So now I've got two of those pumps. I may sell it, I may put it up on eBay. I, I don't know, we might just keep it for backup. So as you guys know, I've already removed the intercooler and as you guys can see under the car, we already drained out the coolant and uh, all that good stuff. So I actually need to package that back up and get started. So this is the pump. Let's uh, put the two pumps next to each other. As you can see, <laughs> this pump, just the inlet and outlet are so much bigger. So you've got the inlet coming in and it goes through the pump and comes out. So the pump itself size is different. I think Lincoln Filter may even sell this as an upgrade. So maybe there's three guys. There's Lincoln Filter, Pro Speed or D3 Performance, whatever you want to call them. That's actually who I got the cooling fans from. They sell it. There's another one, uh, Dedicated Motorsports uh, DMS out of Texas, I believe. And they sell that as a kit. But again, their kit is, all those companies run this pump, but they run their own heat exchanger, etc. I don't know if Kong Performance is running this pump. They might be, they may not be. I'm not sure. I almost would say they're not, simply due to the fact that uh, Greg always runs the Edelbrock heat exchanger and those do not have one inch fittings on the uh, Heat exchanger itself. They're three-quarter. So we're basically me upgrading to the biggest pump that All of the C6 guys like to run now I have tried to find install pictures of this pump But no one shows a clear shot of it being installed now on the C7 Yeah, I've seen a few people run it installed and they simply show you is sitting to the left on the driver's side next to the radiator. Like it's sitting on the uh, lower radiator subframe. I believe it's a similar shape as the C6, but 
it's probably a little bit different because the radiator set up on the C7 is facing forward, not backward, like the Corvette. Yeah, so I'm not exactly sure where they mount it. Now, I looked, I scoured the internet, I scoured Corvette forums. I could not find the installed picture of this pump. I don't know where they simply mount it. Now, I'm under the assumption that they are gonna install this pump on the same location that I had the Bosch pump from Edelbrock. Basically, you drill the hole into the radiator subframe and you attach the Bosch pump. Actually, that's where the Bosch bracket, that bracket holding the Bosch pump screws into. With that being said, I did find one picture of the pump itself and I, I kind of zoomed in. So here's the one picture I found on the internet of the actual pump with a mount on it. And assuming this is mounted on the passenger side, which I, I'm going to make the assumption it is, you guys can see that the mount is actually using three out of the four bolts of the mounting bosses and then it has an angled piece of bracket that's, you know, it's just simply bent. So I'm just gonna assume that's made out of aluminum and we're gonna use three out of the four holes. So we're gonna use this picture as a model to start making our own bracket. All right guys, using a little bit of tape, a little bit of cardboard, a marker and some scissors, I think we've prototyped our bracket pretty well. I'll show you what we've gotten done. We have a cardboard aided design on the bracket and I did have to cut a second piece. I did bend it back here like I was going to. But what I failed to realize is when you cut it square or rectangular shape, you're not gonna have all the material you need for the bracket itself. And this bracket is obviously gonna be shaped a little bit oddly when you lay this flat. And uh, when we cut it out of our material, you know, you're gonna want that extra height and width for your bracket. And so as you guys can see, we have three out of the four bolts Tighten down. I actually I'm using the hardware, so we'll actually have the mark points for where we need to drill some holes for the hardware. We have our flap where we think this is going to go, and uh, this is basically my version of this little bracket right here. You can see this diagonal piece that I was telling you about. I think what we're going to do is take the pump, bolt it to our bracket. Then we're gonna bolt our bracket to this diagonal piece. It's the only way this makes sense. And as you guys can see, I have pump inlet with the arrow pointing toward the front. See the plug for the horn right here? That will get moved onto the inner side here along the radiator and we'll just end up moving the horns. That's not a big deal. We can always move those. So I think that's what we're gonna do. The horns were in this area, but I'm pretty sure that's going to take the same space as the pump. And you guys can also see the bracket spacer that I made for spacing the subframe down. So, I think, uh, I think we're good. guys as you can see we got our basic flap we're you know you can see the rectangle that we cut I'm actually gonna grind this down a little bit more 
I'm basically just kind of grinding the edges, rounding them off, because I really don't want something underneath the car that you can uh, cut yourself really bad on. So let's uh, round off one or two or more of these corners and we'll go from there. As you guys can see, we have our bracket fully drilled and the holes line up. We got two. The reason I don't have the third hole in here is because I think what I'm going to do is actually run a bolt through the subframe. I already have a hole there. So all I have to do is line this stuff up just right. And I think I'm going to be able to get a clamping force of going sideways and getting a bolt through right through the subframe. I may put another bolt through the subframe and go this way, but I think what I'm going to do is just try what I have right now. You know, we've already got a hole in the subframe. All I got to do is get a bolt, run it through, get it through the proper length, and get it in there. All right, guys, you'll see that I have the pump mounted like I was telling you about. Here's that diagonal brace. You can see our little mount here. Here's the bottom of it going up and over. The flange is pressed against the brace. And what I did was I ended up putting... The two bolts through the mounting flange, the bracket that we made. Then the third bolt, like I said, I had already had a pre-drilled hole through this brace right here. And I literally just put it through the brace, through the bracket, and into the pump. And it's tight enough where you shake it, it's not going anywhere. It actually shakes the entire car. So, guys, we're good. This pump is mounted, hopefully for the last time. Now, what we need to figure out is sure you can see this outlet we're gonna have to figure out how to get this pointed back that way and then the other thing we have to intend with is the brake duct right here so that's kind of all sitting in the same spot and guys I'm kind of basing this off of one bracket that I saw I don't see any other way anyone would install this pump in this space right here so I think we uh, pretty much got it. So that pump is sitting at the top of the diagonal brace. Like I pushed it all the way against the weld. I actually had to trim my bracket a little bit. I trimmed a little bit off the bracket. It's all the way to the top. And that's as high as that pump's gonna go. You might be able to push it further down, but the further down you go, the more of that brake duct you're gonna hit. So I think we got a good start on this. We're gonna have to, like I said, check into the plumbing for that outlet the inlet we're good all right guys we finished up the wiring for the water pumps pretty simple all i had to do was get a ground a power and a switch 12 volt source i'll show you right here the ground is right here your switch 12 volts coming from the fuse box and the 12 volts hot is coming from the positive side of the fuse box as well and uh, that's pretty much it. I do need to clean this up. All these red wires, they will eventually get wire loomed. I just haven't gotten to that point yet. And uh, that's pretty much going to be it for this project. All right, guys, we have the battery hooked back up. As you can see, the LED lights are on inside the cabin. The gauge cluster is lit up. I have plugged the wiring in, put a fuse in it. Let's try to see you in accessory mode if the, if the water pump will turn on. You guys hear that? That's the water pump. All right guys, that's pretty much gonna wrap up this water pump project. I didn't show the plumbing, but honestly guys, I just, after I created the mount, I just ran some line down to the pump, put some hose clamps on it, we're good to go. It's nothing too crazy. I already had existing line, you know, for the already pump that was already there. So I used some of that. I also created some new line. Go, We'll go past this wiring nightmare. But I actually created a new braided AN fitting line to go all the way from here all the way down to the pump. So that line I created new. This braided AN hose is actually left over from the SS project. So, you know, I already had it. I had probably six more feet of it. I used maybe four feet roughly. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much gonna be it for the plumbing. Uh, the So that's the inlet going into the water pump, the outlet. 
I just used some existing 90s and straight pieces that I had and uh, that fed up into here, into the in feed line, into the intercooler. So like I said, just uh, use some hoses that I already had and uh, nothing too crazy. So that's it for the plumbing project. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. Also, if you wanna know when I upload new content, hit the bell notification button down below. And if you guys wanna help support the channel, as always, click the links below. Thanks guys, have a great one. Thank you.